Good morning, folks. We've got weather extremes happening around the world. There's science news from the Earth to the moon and out well beyond. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet. But we see dark coronal holes extending in towards the equator from the polar zones. Their interplanetary magnetic fields will switch off Earth connections this week. For now, all is quiet in geospace. Solar wind has fallen back to quiet, calm streams and geomagnetic conditions are riding all quiet as well. That's the end of the quiet part of today's news. Wind shields. No match for the hail in Munich as large ice stones accompanied a tremendous deluge, flash flooded the streets and left evidence of the pounding across a large swath of the city, one of their worst in history. Up next, parts of India haven't seen decent rains in three years. The monsoon shift this year is not helping, and in Maharashtra, a region with more than 100 million people, agricultural output is down 63%. That is a horrendous number. Meanwhile, someone needs to buy the United States a calendar. The temperatures in San Francisco were hot, 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 and then on the other side of the Rockies, it was cold, from the Mexican border up to Bighorn. Record cold swept through at the same time. Let's jump out to the moon. An interesting bit of metal was detected beneath the moon's south polar zone by a bit I mean a bit about the size of Vermont, and it's sitting beneath the largest preserved crater in the solar system. For those interested in the climate change battle, this is a terrific piece on how facts wouldn't work to take on the opposition anymore, so they just resort to bullying. Our most recent work on the topic is linked for you in the list below. It is a video called The Fatal Flaw in Climate Change Science. It is one of our videos most worth checking out. To end here, we continue the recent trend in these shows of sharing bad cosmology and then good cosmology. First, we're at Berkeley and their scientists are pushing for the major shift from WIMP dark matter searches to axion searches, not the least reason being that they're realizing WIMPs aren't real. While axions are technically a better choice than WIMPs, especially because they are trillions the size of a proton and that makes them easy to miss, you got to remember some of the searches so far have been extremely robust, and allegedly the axion does a weird pop into and out of existence as a photon, only in the presence of magnetic fields, but they also say it has no electromagnetic interaction profile with normal matter. Not making sense to you? See? You get it. So the roundabout way of giving Berkeley their tisk tisk today is to share this other recent work bringing strong detail to the alignment of dust grains and magnetic fields in star-forming regions. The finding pumps up the work of SOFIA, which found that magnetism in plasma dominates over gravity in formation zones, and the work in the plasma labs nationwide showing Taurus Jet Electric Plasma Universe Science, which are at Princeton, Caltech, Stanford, and Berkeley, the Lawrence Livermore Lab. Folks, I have spoken with many of those plasma physicists in those national labs, including with Dr. Peratt, who started all of this back in Los Alamos. None can explain the refusal of universities to recognize the plasma universe work of the national labs, except to say it's about their grant money. And I have to agree. We've got professors doing one thing, the national labs doing another. Get your popcorn ready for whenever that one crescendos. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.